Welcome to the Furlough Capital Real Estate Podcast, where we dive into the intricacies of passive real estate investing. And our mission is to equip people to invest wisely in both properties and residences, residents, residents, residents. so that people, those folks who live there, so that together we can build wealth while improving housing. I'm James, and this is my wife, Jessie. Hi. Hey. Um, you know, I, I was just um, pondering. Our kids have been doing swim lessons, and yeah. so you and I have been jumping in and swim, like attempting to swim laps. jumping in. <laughs> Funny. Yeah. Uh, you know, and I found myself the other day as I was swimming some laps and dying, <laughs> like watching some of the other lap swimmers yeah. and trying to like pick out like, what is it that they do that like yeah, lets yeah. them like go and go. And I saw this guy who had like every possible swimming gadget. I felt like really? it was like he had a nose plug, he had things in his ears, he had oh, the I goggles, he had little things on his hands. Yeah, yeah, that's. A I thing. was like, did he was he wearing a like, cap? Obviously, he was bald, so uh, I was like, okay, doesn't need a cap. Did he have yeah, fins? That's fine. Didn't have fins. Okay, but like you know, had all these things, and I was just like, what are all of these gadgets? So, like, mine. I also spy on swimmers, but it's because I'm a bad <laughs> swimmer, and I'm trying to figure out how to do it better. So today. There was this guy who he was back in the pool and he was there another time that I was swimming. Uh-huh. And this kid, I kid you not, would do three <laughs> laps for my one. That's amazing. It was unbelievable. You're and today, like, oh I've, I, infor- I injured myself, so I can't go swimming right now. It's super lame. So I was yeah. just out there. But he started swimming. I was like, okay, I'm going to yeah, study him. Watch. And I did notice that he did something different than I do oh. with his arms. And so just to go down this rabbit hole. So like he puts his arm out uh-huh. and, it, and he keeps his arm out. And then his other arm comes down and does the full rotation. And there's like a Superman moment. It's very quick. And then the other arm goes. And so it's this very, like, very slow. Whereas mm-hmm. I'm more like, I'm already, I'm trying to think. When I'm swimming, when my my hands are always like 180 degrees apart. Uh-huh. So when I have a hand up in the air, I've got my other hand down low. Interesting. And then I'm back. And so it's not quite that, but it's pretty right. darn close. So he was more like... Only moving yeah, it's one like arm at, the at a time. Yeah, like the full glide and the full pull. And I noticed pull, too, like he, and then... he, um, because another lady who was beside him who swims more like I do, mm. where her arms were always slightly bent, and mm. she was like chopping into the water. Whereas when he would do it, he would fully extend and almost lay his hand down on the mm-hmm. water, where she yeah, was like, like diving, like she was diving in. Interesting. Well, I'm more of a diver in, so I'm taking notes. So next time I swim, yeah, I'm gonna try his try method to reach. and and keep that harm. Steady uh, until the other one comes around. So only one would, arm at a time. I wonder time. if that would like help with breathing too, because it's like okay, you're gonna leave that, and then this one's like straight while you're breathing. I don't know. That's don't the know. part I struggle with. Is it's like when do I breathe? So here's the deal with swimming. <laughs> it's in order to do it effectively, you can't, you shouldn't just jump into the right. pool and go for it. I mean, you can, you can, but there's a huge learning process. Yeah. And in order to do better at it, it's really helpful to have specific tools and resources to help you do it's it, true. like from an education standpoint yeah. or just like you're talking about tools, like different, like things. different things, gadgets, uh, different resources <laughs> to help you learn, all that some stuff. Yeah. So that's what we're going to talk about today. If you are interested in passively investing, mm. what are some of those tools and resources that you can use to not only get you started, but to mm-hmm. do it successfully going on and on? Makes sense. Because that's like me with swimming. I can do it. But man, it's slow and it's painful and it's not fun. Yeah. And I and I know that if I can learn the right way, mm-hmm. use the right tools, get the right resources to teach me, like I will actually do it. Because you see these guys who are, yeah. you know, 60 plus years old yeah. and they'll They're swim for like going. an hour nonstop. I'm yeah. like, I like I do one lap and I got to take a break. I don't understand. <laughs> so the question is, how do you become that swimmer who can just go a long mm-hmm. time? How do you become that investor that's in it for the long haul? Yeah. To win, and there definitely are some tools and resources to help you do that, and I want to talk about that. Cool. There you go. I like it. Boom. So, in order to get started or to do it well, there are some barriers, mm. and so I kind of want to. It's how I was thinking about it when I was taking my notes, and I kind of thought of four different barriers, mm. and I was going to put them to you to say, like, you know, if you were, what do you think stops someone from mm. getting in? Um, I just kind of pick them off as you. Yeah, I think I, I think one is just like the fear of the unknown okay. almost where it's like yeah you're like i just i don't know anything about this and i don't like why would i put my money into something that i'm like i don't understand it yeah i don't so that know was, it for me it was lack of knowledge yeah it was one of those yep 
keep going can i well, um, i guess before we okay, dive yeah, into the solutions see. other other barriers other barriers um maybe uh you you don't have a lot to invest yep that's one of my first ones like too you Oops. you just have a minimum amount that's like well i don't no. Yeah, high capital requirements to get started. Yep. Right. Um, That's perfect. We'll talk about that too. Perhaps like one of them is, I, I want to say, I don't know if this is on your list, but I, I want to say like uh, if you're if you're married or in a relationship, like having not, that yeah. spouse buy-in, yeah. you know, is that could be a barrier. Yeah. It's which not on your list. That but lack it's, of knowledge. Yeah side of the piece kind of true because you yeah you both but need to learn i think i'll address that indirectly yeah as well um i think um that's I good know, i only got of, two more all of mine kind of stem from that whole like i don't know what i'm doing so this lack of knowledge which, type so thing. there's a so the i don't know what i'm doing there's there's two parts to it right there is the whole uh, like the like the lack of knowledge but mm-hmm. then there's the also okay i do want to do it this is a good idea how do i actually like do it uh yeah okay right? which is it's d- slightly related, different but different yeah you're convinced of this particular type started. of investment but it's yeah. like where do i start yeah 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 uh-huh. the now what yeah. yeah so i think those are like those are two different categories yeah. and it's like so uh, related to that it's like okay i don't really know where to get started but even if i find like a person who's doing this like how do yeah. i know i can trust them and yeah build yeah. that relationship yeah, yeah, yeah. Up? oh that's perfect we're gonna talk about that and then the last one is just limited access to opportunities and there's Mm. a reason behind that you may be like i'm all in i know exactly what to do Mm -hmm. there's just nothing to nothing to invest in but i mean seems kind of rare because there are things maybe we're gonna talk about that Hmm. so um so yeah so so that was awesome that was great yeah good job high five boom all right so let's start with the high capital requirement one yeah and eventually we'll just assume that you have enough but to Mm -hmm. get started uh and i do and i do guess i do want to say yeah let's assume that you have enough but it is a high capital requirement, and that is yeah. kind of a big deal. So my first piece of advice to someone is start small. Mm. Like, do whatever their minimum is. Mm-hmm. Don't be like, I'm throwing my entire net worth into this thing. Start small. That That's sense. okay. Learn from the process. Mm-hmm. And through that, one of the other things you want to do is you want to determine what your goals are. Okay. And that's where, like, if you're working with a spouse, it's really important to know that. And there's basically, mm-hmm. there's two different types. There's income and long-term appreciation. Okay. And you got to decide... Which one is more important to me? Because that will influence the type of investments that you go for. Mm-hmm. And so, um, yeah. So I think those. So are what's some... the difference between income and long term investment? No, long term appreciation. Long term appreciation. Yeah, yeah. So let's say, you know, you're like, hey, this is money that I want to live off of. Yeah. Um, you're like, man, I gotta, I want to earn, you know, whatever, fifty bucks a month from this investment. Mm-hmm. Like that's something you're gonna aim for ones that if it is debt, they're paying you monthly payments. Okay. If it is an equity ownership, they've got regular distributions that mm. they're doing versus long-term appreciation, which is really more equity is saying, I don't want to get paid out, but I know that in five, seven years we're going to sell. And that's okay. where I'm going to double You'll my money. You'll make like a big chunk of yeah. money. Yeah. Which is often what Makes happens sense. in Oregon because it's hard to find stuff that cash flows mm-hmm. in the area. Okay. Here's another really, really big one is you need to assess your risk tolerance. Uh huh. Okay. And so I've got some tips on how to do that. I went and I actually looked up a bunch of questionnaires mm. from different investing sites mm-hmm. and they all kind of boiled down to these ones. So first one you want to do is you want to reflect on your past experiences. And you know, like when you think about, okay, how much money, how nervous, how do I don't want to say it, what's the amount of money in my bank account that makes me nervous? <laughs> you know, uh-huh. for some people that might be you know, three weeks makes me nervous. Uh-huh. For some people, it's three months. For some people, it's a less than a year makes me nervous. Uh-huh. So you just got to figure out like where do I yeah. fall on that spectrum, and and just like just other situations in general. You know, like how do you feel about people who I don't know ride bikes without helmets and things like that? Mm-hmm. Uh, how do you feel about yeah some of those more extreme types of just activities that people mm. do versus not? Because that kind of all will give you an idea. And I think we yeah. all inherently know, but that's it. Some other things that you can ask yourself. I think this is really important is what's your level of knowledge. Hmm. If you don't know a lot about the investment you're walking into, it's risky. <laughs> and so treat it as such. Hmm. 
But if you're like, oh no, I've done this kind of investment. I, I know what these returns are. I know what mm-hmm. they mean. I know how they're going to get there. That's a way you can take on things that are more risky because you're offsetting it with knowledge you already have. Well, one of the things mm. that I'm thinking though is like as a passive investor, I'm trusting my sponsor so how well do you know to sponsor? know how to do the things. Might be one of those things. Yeah, yeah so yeah. It's, it's, it's slightly different. Mm-hmm. But it's mm-hmm. but you're right. Totally. I, I need to know something. Yes, I need to at least trust the person who's yes doing the property and have asked what yep. types of properties have you yeah you know deals have you done before and how did it go and yeah you know. um, another thing is to look at like previous investment <clears throat> risks that you've taken and how hmm. you've allocated some of those funds. Mm-hmm. Um, oh, great thing to look at is what type of investments what type of investments do you currently own? Like is it hmm. primarily stocks? Is it bonds? Are they blue chip, big companies? Mm -hmm. Are they international stocks? Are they individual stocks? Are they index funds? Hmm. Those kind of things. That all kind of speaks again to how you think about risk. Yeah. Which again, will kind of influence how much you're willing to invest just to begin with Mm -hmm. from your portfolio. If you are primarily in bonds, like you're going to be really interested in doing debt type of funding, Mm -hmm. like the recent flip that we're currently involved in. Yeah. That kind of thing. If you are like, man, I just do blue chip index <clears throat> dividend index fund dividend paying types of things. Like, man, that's pretty low risk type mm-hmm. of stuff. I don't know if doing a syndication is for you. You might be like, yeah, you know, do a REIT, mm. <laughs> something like that. Uh, finally, I like this one. You can do some like mental scenario planning. Imagine that you own stocks and then the stock market drops twenty five percent. What do you do? Mm-hmm. What's your reaction? Do you freak out? Or are you just like, oh my gosh, I can't breathe? Or are you like, it's okay, things come back. It's temporary. Like, and it's no there's no right or wrong answer. What you're trying to do is get a sense for where you land mm. and how you perceive risk. Which I kind of feel like risk uh your risk tolerance can change over your lifetime. Oh, I'll do my very last one. How much time do you have <laughs> to recover? Yeah, well, because yeah. I was kind of like, all right, like currently we might view it one way, but 20 years down the road, we might be like, ah, we want to retire or yeah. kids have different needs or, you know, I don't know, healthcare yeah, changes. And it's like yeah. our, the risk that we're willing to take is suddenly different. Yep. So those are kind of my thoughts for how you, um, how you think about your capital requirements and how mm. much you're willing to put into it. Mm-hmm. Think about it. All right. The big one, lack of knowledge or, and, or a fear of loss, yeah. I think is a huge barrier. Mm-hmm. So step one, you got to understand the basics of real estate investing and how it all works. And um, there's two books that I recommend. Mm. They're long. Sorry. I got other resources. (laughs) Don't worry. The first one is called The Hands-Off Investor by Brian Burke. Mm. It's like a 350-page slog of a book, but it really goes into the details. I don't know if you have to read the entire book, but Mm. like the intro and like skipping through a few things that pique your interest, I think Mm. is really good. Same thing with, there's a book called The Book on Rental Property Investing by Brandon Turner. And mm. there are specific passages in there. Again, read the intro, get the good overview for it. And then they have, he has sections specifically on passive investing strategies. Mm. And mm-hmm. so it's worth reviewing just that part of it. Other things you can do is you can listen to podcasts just like this one. Woo-hoo. <laughs> and you can, you can read the books, you can read other articles. Mm-hmm. I think a really good one is to get on a phone with other mm-hmm. professionals you know, like myself. Let's talk about it. Let's yeah. let's let's have multiple conversations. I got a guy, I'm pretty sure is listening right now, who we hang out and we have coffee every once in a while. Mm-hmm. We just kind of talk, and he's doing some of his own stuff. He wants to invest with us, and mm-hmm. and we just talk about different strategies and where we're at, and it just kind of helps fill in some of those knowledge gaps that he mm-hmm. has. And um, he doesn't have a lot. He's a pretty smart guy, but. Yeah. I, but like, those are things that you can do. I mm-hmm. love, I tell people all the time, I love talking about real estate. I could talk mm-hmm. about all day long. It is it's, never, it's true. It's never an imposition <laughs> to be like, Hey, can we set up some time to talk? Yes, absolutely. <laughs> I'd love to do this. <laughs> and so, so those are just, mm-hmm. those are some resources and tools and you got to put in the work yeah. to do it. And I, I got a couple others that we'll talk about in a little bit that will further speed up the things. Hmm. Okay. Next barrier, limited access to opportunities. Mm-hmm. So here's the deal. There is there are different types of um, investment types. Mm-hmm. There are some that are, um, I wrote 501 C and I am absolutely 100% certain that that is the wrong number. <laughs> um, and I cannot think of what it is right now. And I don't have my phone to, to just ask chat GPT what the answer is. I have no but idea. Essentially there's, 
there are a lot of like almost all syndications mm-hmm. are like a B class type of syndication, which yeah. means the only way that I can tell you about it is if we have a prior relationship, mm. which means you got to be on my email list, which means I got to know who you are. You can't just some blast stuff it out to the interwebs. Yeah, and that's Whoa. the C type. Mm. But if it's a C type, it's re- it's only for accredited investors and there's okay. requirements for The limits for it. are higher. And- yeah, things mm. like that. And so, um, but for all those B ones, they're just never publicly stated. So mm-hmm. we can do things like this. Right, we can have podcasts. We can talk about general concepts, but I'm not going to tell you about a specific thing in right. this type of forum. Now, get on my email list. Very different. Mm-hmm. That's when I can tell you about it. And so, the ways that you find out about people who are doing syndications or who are doing flips, looking for loans, there's a couple things to do. First, there's a local real estate group somewhere near you. I'm pretty sure of it. Go there. And don't just, I mean, you can talk to people, but go talk to the leader specifically mm-hmm. because they are the ones who are going to be in the know of, oh, here's the person who you want to talk to. Mm-hmm. They're doing stuff. They're trustworthy, whatever. And then once you've done that, get to know that person, sign mm-hmm. up for their list, listen to their podcast, get to know them mm-hmm. because they're the ones who are going to be sponsoring the deal. That's that's a huge one. Um, another thing that you can do and the keywords that you want is syndication and private money lender. Mm. If you If you ask about those types of things, you will then find people who are offering those types of hmm. projects. And a local group is a fantastic place to start. And and that's how it is. It's a start. And you might have to ask around a little bit. If yeah. you got another friend who's you know talked about investment they've done, mm-hmm. talk to them. Oh, I'd love to meet whoever your person is. Hmm. You could start with some real estate agents. Um, they Maybe. tend to not know as many. It's the local real estate group mm-hmm. or their Facebook group or something like that. Hmm. That's going to be your best in, yeah. in my opinion. Hmm. Um, so that's how you find out about them. And it's just because they're all kind of hidden because of the way the rules is are it, written. This is like kind of a side note. Oh, I love side notes. Uh, I mean, let's say someone is in a different uh, state or country or whatever. Yeah. Like they could still invest with you, right? Um, they don't have to be The country is an local. interesting one, but correct. Uh, anywhere in the country is fine. All right. If someone is a foreign individual, uh-huh. real estate rules get complicated uh-huh. quick. You can do it, but they just get complicated, complicated. really, really quick. Hmm. Um, but if you are a U.S. citizen living in yeah. another country, you can still invest. That's not a problem. Okay. But yeah, but it's like someone from a different state. If they yeah, if they like, happen I got up an on investor, our podcast or uh, something, it was in Maine. Yeah. So yeah, super far away. Okay. I've got people in California, Idaho, yeah, Oregon, Washington. Okay. Yeah, state doesn't matter. That kind of makes sense. Yep. 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 Mm-hmm. And I can invest in anywhere in the U.S. as well. Right. I primarily focus on Oregon because that's the market you that know I know, it. yeah, and so it works for me. Mm-hmm. Okay. Last barrier, you're not really sure how to get started on it. And again, these are I'm just trying to give some very specific tools yeah. and resources to help people get in or be successful. Mm-hmm. And as you can tell, the big theme here is like, you got to do some reading, yeah. got to talk to some people and just get to know yeah. them and start to get steeped into it. Mm-hmm. But now you're like, I'm in, I'm convinced, I want to do this. <laughs> now what? I, so the basic structure is once you've made your contacts, you're going to find out about a deal. Mm-hmm. Like for me, I'm going to send an email that has all the highlights, and then it's going to be linked to another web page that mm-hmm. has all the deal details. Yeah. So you're going to go there. And then what you want to do is you want to review and do your due diligence. Mm. Is this a good deal? Does it make sense for me? Does it align with my goals? Does it align with my risk tolerance? Mm-hmm. Does it... Um, you know, does it does it make sense to me? And am I qualified for it? Right? Is it a, uh, one that can be publicly stated? Mm-hmm. Is it a B or is it a C? You know, that kind of stuff. Does it answer my one question? Yeah. Uh, is it do I make well? money? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and once you decide yes, then you commit. You tell that person, "I'm in." Mm-hmm. That stuff's really important because it's usually a first come, first serve situation. Oh. So you want to tell them right away. That's how it works with me. First people who tell me I'm in, they're the ones who are in. And then finally. You got to transfer the funds mm-hmm. into an escrow account typically. So um, first word of advice is when you're going through that due diligence, that is the critical time period mm-hmm. to decide. And I have a 196 due diligence question vault. You don't have to ask all 196 yeah. questions. I recommend you read through them all. And I definitely <laughs> highlight the, the ones where I'm like, these ones are super important. And they should be addressed mm-hmm. in whatever that offering prospectus mm-hmm. is. I know that's what I do. Yeah. I try to look at all of them. And really what you don't want to have happen is you don't want to get fooled by the big top line numbers. Because mm-hmm. they might be like, oh my gosh, you're going to earn 27% return on this. Wow, that's awesome. That sounds really good. But how do they know? What does mm-hmm. the construction budget look like? 
who's the team who's going to be doing it. Like there's mm -hmm. essentially there's eight different areas to look into. Mm -hmm. I talk all about that in my vault. Super important. Yeah. Just don't get stuck into the top line numbers. Ah, oh, man, that happens. Mm. Another thing that I think could be super helpful is knowing where you can get funds from. Obviously, mm. cash mm -hmm. is nice. You can pull it from existing equity in a home. Mm -hmm. You might just have it sitting in a savings account. Oftentimes, there are a lot of people who have it just sitting in an IRA mm -hmm. that maybe they've just saved in or they had an old job and now yeah. they've moved to another one and now that is just sitting there. Mm -hmm. So you can do what's called a self-directed IRA. Mm -hmm. And that's where you can invest with that and just really goose your retirement mm -hmm. returns, which is super cool. Mm -hmm. And um, I wrote an entire article. I'll link to it in various places. So you can really, it's like, it's the nuts and bolts. Here's what you can invest in. Here's what you can't invest in. Here's like how to do it. With just specifically with your retirement account? Yes, correct. Um, uh, where would you start if you were like not sure what money you should use? What do you mean? <laughs> um, like, let's say I did have some savings, but I had some in retirement and I had some that was like, I know I'm going to inherit this later or like, you know, yeah. I don't know. Where would What's you the savings for? Uh, retirement. Oh, just in a bank just, account. Then start know. with that. Start with the stuff that's easy, that's okay. not as critical. Start with the liquid things. Yeah, and then... yeah. If it's sitting like a 401k, mm -hmm. sorry, you're kind of stuck where, where that is. You have to be able to convert it into a self-directed has to be an IRA. IRA. Yeah, one that gives you what's called checkbook control, which mm -hmm. essentially lets you write a check and then it comes from the account. Mm -hmm. There are self-directed IRAs, but that's not the case where you have to call someone and ask for permission, mm. like a little kid to invest, and yeah. they may be like, well, yes or no. Hmm. Whereas like checkbook control lets you do it. Uh, the service that I recommend, the specific resource, is called U, the letter U, directira.com. Hmm. That one is like best in class in terms of gives you full control, lets hmm. you do it, and um, has minimum fees, all that hmm. fun stuff. Cool. And so that's the that's the place where I would start if I was super interested in mm -hmm. it. And I read my article because mm -hmm. you can't invest in everything. There are definitely yeah. limitations. One of the biggest ones is that if you invest in real estate through an SD IRA, you personally cannot benefit directly from it. Mm -hmm. And that's a big one. It's actually been a stopper for my family. So like my parents, are like, oh, we would love mm -hmm. to invest with you. And I'm like, I love you guys. It's so awesome. But I would benefit from it. And so they can't. Interesting. From that particular IRA account. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Hmm. Now they just got money sitting in a bank account. Who cares? No big deal. They can do whatever. But hmm. yeah. Question. Yeah. Uh, if if there's someone who's wanting to passively invest in one of your deals and they're not sure, you know, what they can actually do, should they reach out to you or should they do some of this other due diligence first? What do you mean by they're not sure? Well, let's just say like, I'm like, I have this retirement account. I think I can pull the money out of it, but I don't know. Yeah. Like, would I call you and be like, I would really love to invest with you, but I have no idea how this works. Yeah. Um, I could, yeah. Someone like me can definitely help you answer those types of questions. You point them in the right directions. Yep. To yeah, exactly. Like I was talking with a friend today. He's got some money sitting in an IRA mm -hmm. and, and he actually did an investment with someone else who used their IRA, mm. a self-directed one. And he was like, hey, like, what can we do? Can I use it for this and that? I was mm. like, yeah, here, let me tell you what you can and can't do. Yeah. And, um, and he was like, oh yeah, that's super helpful. Mm. So, uh, so yeah, you can definitely start with me. And if I don't know, I'll just tell you. Yeah. I'm like, yeah, it's a weird situation. But, um, yeah. but also the internet's pretty cool and we can look stuff up. And I that's know true. enough of the key terms to like, okay, here's the mm -hmm. direction you want to head in. That makes sense. Go from there. You know, you can always just talk to an accountant too. They're yeah. usually pretty good about that kind of stuff. Hmm. But yeah, so there you go. Those are some very just specific tools yeah. and resources to get you started if you're like, I don't even know where to begin. And if it's me, it's like, hey, just do some general reading, yeah. figure out your goals, figure out your risk profile, find someone who's doing it, mm -hmm. and then get ready to analyze and pull the trigger. Nice. So you can transfer funds. And then after that, you're like, dude, just hang out. Wait for the returns to come in. Woo woo. Super cool. Or you could just marry in. Or you just That's what I did. <laughs> yeah. That's also an option. I got one point on my list. There you go. Find someone who's Boom. into real estate, marry them. Done. Yeah. But I still, <laughs> but true. But I also made you read a bunch uh, of real estate that's true. books. And, <laughs> that's and true. I had, pulled to do, you I, this. I had to do so, my due diligence. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. And you figured out your criteria. So it's all good. No, you did it. You did it. I did. It's all good. 
So there you go. Hopefully you found that helpful. And if you did, we would love it if you left a comment or a review wherever it is that you listen to podcasts. And if you are interested in investing with us, you can check us out at furlough.com. And yeah, thanks for listening. Have a great day.